It's a sharky kind of day. What's up divers and welcome to our channel, Asul Unlimited, where we teach all things scuba diving. My name is Sarah and today, 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 we have a very special video from a good friend of ours right here on YouTube. His name is Greg. He is the personality behind Ginge Under the Sea, where he teaches all about sharks and conservation. And he is coming to us on our channel to teach us a little bit about how to scuba dive with sharks. Let's get to it. Hi guys, I'm Greg Holder from Ginge Under the Sea. Thank you so much, Sarah, for having me on your channel. So just a little background on me. I'm a free diver and scuba dive instructor, and I've spent the last few years diving in Mozambique and South Africa and working with a shark conservation organization. Now I'm here trying to spread that word online, trying to get as many people interested in sharks as possible and in marine conservation in general, and learning how we can protect the vital ecosystems that are in our oceans. So first of all, when talking about scuba diving with sharks, we need to remember that 99% of all shark species, in fact, don't pose any threat to humans at all. So with over 500 species of shark in the ocean, that means that only about five or six species actually pose any potential threat. What we really need to consider is what species are we diving with? And if it is likely that it's that 99% that we're done with, we don't have to worry so much about our own safety, but more about the impact we might have on the shark's safety or the shark's behavior or the environment that the shark is living in. Now, if you are diving with those five or six potentially dangerous sharks, and that would be great white, tiger, bull, oceanic white tip, and then maybe a few of the larger whaler sharks, such as a dusky shark, or maybe large black tips or something like that. Now, if you are diving with these species, you still have to remember that in fact, the risk on divers is still very, very little. Sharks do not see humans as a potential food source. And in fact, sharks generally don't really know what we even are. They haven't evolved with us being in the ocean. Unlike lions, lions have evolved with primates and animals that look like us over millions and millions of years in the savannas of Africa, where sharks have only started seeing this weird two-legged thing with a tank on its back over the last hundred years or so. So generally they just don't know what we are, which is why if they do come closer, they're usually coming in as a bit more of an investigation to try and work out whether we are predator or whether we're just some other animal that they don't really care about. Really what we have to remember is even then the threat that they pose to us on a dive is very minimal as long as your behavior is appropriate for the dive. Now the fact is that the vast majority of sharks we see on a dive actually won't come particularly close to us. Unfortunately for, for divers that love sharks is they generally swim away pretty quickly as they don't like the noise of bubbles. And generally, especially if it's a big group of divers, that can be quite intimidating. And so the vast majority of time, if there is big groups of divers and they're not behaving in the right way, sharks will leave that area pretty quickly. Now, if the shark does hang around, then that's great for the divers because that's usually what a lot of divers want to see, but there needs to be the right etiquette to keep the shark around, but still not encourage it to come too close to actually sort of investigate you within a meter or two. Regardless of the fact whether you're diving with a potentially dangerous large shark or you're diving with any of the other 99% of species of sharks, there still should be some etiquette to follow in order for one, to reduce any sort of risk, even if it's small, of a negative interaction with a shark, but also to reduce any sort of stress or behavior change in the shark and also to protect the environment. So the first thing we should always remember is do not chase the shark. This is a rule across any wild animal. No wild animal likes to be chased because that will feel like a predation and therefore they're gonna go faster. And I'm gonna guess that any shark or any fish is gonna be able to swim faster than you and therefore it's gonna disappear faster than if you don't chase it. So do not chase the sharks guys 
the chances are if you don't chase them, they might come back round in sort of a big circle, which is what they tend to do when they're nice and calm and relaxed. And you'll actually get a few more sightings of this shark, where if you swim after it, that shark is gonna be gone into the blue and won't be coming back. The main things you should be thinking about when you are on a dive with a potentially dangerous shark, what you wanna be doing is nice, slow, calm movements, not flapping around, because again, these sharks will be hunting larger, injured animals. Generally, if there is an injured animal, they will take advantage of that animal being injured to, to predate on it. So if we are flapping around, making loads of noise and looking very erratic, we're basically mimicking an injured and dying animal and therefore sharks are gonna to wanna to come in and have a much closer look to check out whether or not you are actually that injured animal. I'm not dead. Yeah. He says he's not dead. Yes, he is. I'm not. Another thing to do is to keep your limbs quite close to your body as having sort of a rogue hand here or there could look like a, a smaller fish that is sort of swimming near a larger fish, which again, sharks may think of as prey source. So best to keep your arms nice and tight into your body. If you are on a dive with particularly large sharks, such as large tiger sharks, then the dive instructor and the dive master should be controlling that dive and should be judging the behavior of that shark as to whether it's nice and calm and it's just sort of swimming around us, or is it actually a little bit agitated and in a bit of a different mood which would make the dive a little bit more dangerous. The next really important thing to do is to have good control of your buoyancy. Now buoyancy is such an important skill to make sure that you have a good dive, but also that you look after the environment around you, okay? We don't want divers scraping along the seafloor destroying or damaging the reefs, but also we don't want you floating up to the surface as that's a safety risk in yourself, but also sharks will be a bit more interested if you're sort of floating off into the distance, they might be a bit more interested in sort of following up and seeing why you're sort of disappearing up to the surface so far. So keep really good buoyancy, ideally keep quite low and quite close to the reef, but definitely off the reef. Sharks are also extremely sensitive to noise. Now, everybody knows that sharks have this incredible sense of smell and they can smell fish blood from very long distances away. The theory that they will come searching if you cut yourself in the water isn't true. They'd have no reaction to human blood at all, but if there is fish blood in the water, they have incredible smell to follow that up and find that source. But in fact, their strongest sense, which is quite often ignored, is their hearing. They have incredibly good hearing, particularly for low frequency sounds. So when you are on a shark dive, it is good to keep the noise to a minimum, and that is also gonna keep the sharks nice and relaxed, and you're not gonna either spook the sharks or aggravate them and sort of get them all hyped up and wound up. Man, oh man, is Greg killing this list. So if you're new here, make sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell to make sure that you don't miss any of our future videos and stay through to the end of the video where you will easily be able to subscribe to Greg's channel as well, Ginge Under the Sea. Let's get back to it. The first thing you need to do if you are considering doing a shark dive is finding a good, responsible operator to go with. All right, so not only for your safety, but to know that you are not having a negative impact on that environment and on that shark population. So ways you can know whether a shark diving operator is responsible is first of all, if they have number limits on their dives, okay, it's really important, huge groups of divers shouldn't be allowed. Also, just if they show other ways of being responsible, like being an eco-friendly dive center, not having lots of throwaway plastic and not having lots of waste. And another really good sign of a dive operator being responsible is do they give you a thorough briefing before you go on a dive explaining how you should be behaving as a diver? Shark chumming, yeesh. A controversial topic. A lot of people, huge fans, love to shark dive with chum. And then you've got the other party, people who can't stand chumming, thinks it's awful, it's destroying the environment, it's changing sharks' behavior. You know, they both have a good point. There is definitely an argument for baiting or chummed shark dives. Shark tourism in general brings in a lot of money for many countries around the world. Bahamas bring in millions of dollars a year, South Africa, Australia, millions of dollars every year through the shark industry alone. Now, a lot of these places rely on baiting or chumming the waters to get those sharks to come in. 
and the money that that brings in can have hugely beneficial impact on the local environment and therefore it gives value to those sharks being alive and we see this in a lot of countries where shark tourism starts to grow and prove to the locals that sharks are valuable sharks are valuable alive the shark fishing and the the destruction of reefs and things tends to slow down or completely stop when locals realize how they can make money other ways and they don't have to destroy and kill and sell off the the parts the money in the shark industry is vitally important because if we don't have money in the shark industry sharks won't get protection unfortunately the world is run by money and so if something doesn't bring in money it's very unlikely to get protection be high up on the agenda for governments and therefore get just left to whatever happens on a local scale however there are still problems with baited and chummed shark dives that mean that it if it does happen it needs to be very much controlled it needs to be done by responsible operators that have as have a minimal effect on the sharks and shark behavior and the general ecology of the reef now when a lot of people argue that when you feed sharks or you bait it it changes their behavior and to a degree that will happen but a really good analogy i like to use when i look at shark baiting and and sort of feeding of sharks as to how their behavior changes is imagine if you're walking down the road with your family to go to a pizza restaurant and you stop off in the local news agents and you just buy a chocolate bar that isn't probably going to affect your feeding behavior or eating behaviors when you go to the pizza restaurant you're still going to order the same amount of food so that extra feeding didn't make a difference to your behavior where if you're walking along the street to the pizza place and you stop off at a Chinese takeaway and you get a whole Chinese takeaway then obviously that is going to change your behavior once you get to the pizza place please don't take the steam tray tis no man tis a remorseless eating machine what we need to understand is that a small amount of feeding is not going to change the shark's behavior as long as it's not so much that they can rely on it then it's not going to make a significant difference to their behavior they're still going to be hunting a number of different species of fish and therefore they're still going to have that impact that they have on the ecosystem which is that top predatory role where they remove ill species and they stop any species overpopulating and all those keystone species roles that they provide to ecosystems so what you need to do if you are considering doing a baited or chum shark dive is find out a little bit more about the operator check if they have sort of a time schedule and a limit for how much they feed the sharks each day. See if they change locations so that the sharks don't get used to the same place where they get fed every day, so it keeps it a bit more random. And just check that they are using science and they are keeping up to date with current recommendations and guidelines and laws to ensure that there is as minimal impact on the health of the sharks and the ecosystem while also successfully bringing money into the area and into the industry of shark tourism so that we can continue pushing to protect sharks globally because i'll end with a personal experience of mine one of my favorite dives that i ever did which was in mozambique in a place called pontadora and that coastline that whole mozambique and a south african coastline is just so sharky it's incredible if you want to go for shark experiences that is one of the best places in the world in pontador a very good dive operator gozo azul similarly named uh dive center and we actually it wasn't a baited dive even though what we did use to attract the sharks on that dive was crackling a bottle and that's another technique which can be used instead of baiting which is a really good option where crackling a bottle underwater just makes that noise that sounds like a panicking fish or possibly breaking bones of a fish and therefore those sharks as i said that that hearing is their best sense so that is one of the best ways to get sharks to come in and just investigate the local area we crackled a bottle and that just brought in a number of different sharks and we had probably four or five different bull sharks come in and just very calmly circle the group and yeah we had a few bull sharks from around us a few black tips um, a few silver tips and we were even lucky enough to have a, a shiver of about 30 or 40 scalloped hammerheads just swim past us 
in the distance, which was just incredible. We had the whole hour's dive of these amazing, beautiful big sharks just swimming around really nice and relaxed with us. Because there was no charm or bait in the water, it keeps their effort level a bit lower because they've just heard something in the distance that may be food, but they're not really triggered up or firing to really scavenge or to hunt. So they, that's why they come in and they're nice and calm where when there is that smell of fish in the water from chumming or baiting, that can definitely sort of up their, up their tempo a little bit, which can obviously change the type of dive you're on. So this one was an incredibly calm and beautiful dive and I would recommend everyone to go on a shark dive if you ever get the chance. I hope you really enjoyed today guys. Thank you so much Sarah for having me on your channel. I really hope everyone has learned something new and I look forward to seeing you on my channel soon. Don't forget to follow me at Ginge Under The Sea on Instagram, Facebook and obviously my YouTube channel where you can learn a lot more about marine conservation in general but also learn loads of detailed stuff about sharks. Everything you want to know about sharks is probably on that channel. All right, I want to give a big ol' thank you and shout out to Greg from Ginge Under the Sea. That was a very, very helpful list of diver etiquette and shark conservation awareness. As always, if you like this video, give it a big ol' thumbs up! And comment below if you have any questions about shark conservation, about diving with sharks, and make sure that you subscribe to our channel for more helpful, informative content like this. Also, if you really enjoyed Greg, make sure that you go to his channel, subscribe, watch some of his videos, and leave a comment there telling him that you came from us, okay? Give him a little bit of love. Let's just let this scuba diving community grow and support one another, especially when it comes to these topics of conservation because we have a lot of work to do. As always, you guys, we have our merch available on our website so you can get yourself a cool shark sweatshirt and support our small business as we come to the end of this interesting year, 2020. Yeah. <laughs> Also, if you're not following us on Facebook or Instagram, make sure you do that because we're sharing content over there that is informative, educational, and fun. So we'd love to see you there. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.